Hey everybody, Joe Conkley in the shop. Today, we are just uh, looking at two ongoing projects. The uh, rebracing of a 70s D28, I got a 48 D28 with uh, some major uh, restoration going too. And we'll take a look at both. First, a little uh, live action stuff here on this rebracing. So I just plugged in my double boiler to warm up my series of heated, moistened spatulas. And uh, that out of the way and show you what I've been up to on this. This is what I'm up to. I believe it was probably this one was the first one that came off. And uh, in the meantime, cone bar number, I'm not sure whether it be one or two, it's the one furthest away from the sound hall. And I get cone bar number two. Took that one off. Then I started to work on the lower arm of the X brace and the bridge plate rick beside it because this X brace had been kind of hacked up. Um, as I was just lifting a little bit to uh, get more access, it ended up snapping right there, which is not a problem because I'm not going to reuse that. And I also took off two little finger braces we got right here. So um, since the knives get up to um, temperature, we'll continue on that. I'm going to grab a brush for getting up the warm water where I need it. So I have pretty much all of this x brace up to the joint. And about half of the uh, uh, large rosewood bridge plate, which also includes the uh, bridge pin holes that are plugged and re-drilled. So we've got two sets of bridge pin holes and a hole that was previously uh, for the bridge doctor, as I mentioned before. And uh, just working my way through all that. My plan, I have this upper spreader here, or spreader at the waist, because when I did the back, got the back and put it off, I noticed that the hole, the sides just kind of moved in inward this way. So put the spreader in to press them back out against the edge of the, uh, the mold. So my idea here is to remove all the stuff in the lower bout, uh, put a different spreader on at the lower bout, and take the, this spreader off to give me access to everything up here. Uh, one thing to note is, and, and uh, we'll, that's probably where I'm going to start today, is uh, here at the lower arm of the X-brace, all four ends of the X-brace are tucked into the line. So right over here, when I removed this end, I had to remove some of the line so I could pull the brace out. I'm just gonna replace it once I get the new X-brace in and tuck it around there again. It's gonna be the same thing over here on this one. I'm gonna start right over here by uh, removing just that little section of perf uh, lining it will allow me to start with this end of the expiration and pop it up and work my way over and hopefully get the whole bridge play on it. Right? So take these two out and then move along right there. So there's the, the water up the temp. And uh, let me see if I can start there. pop off these three little sections here. It's actually one continuous piece of lining, but I am going to work my way down here and then I'm gonna, you know, cut or break them off right there. And now put a new piece in there that, oops, would not be continuous. Oh, that actually helped. My little uh, thing I thought I'd put an extra bend in my spatula there that I didn't want. Actually, I'm proud, so I'm gonna have to work that fairly slow. 
slowly here. It's not really separating that easily. get down through the lining but not force the edge of the spatula into the top because it's all right there on the corner. The binding is still intact. I want everything to look the same on the outside when I get finished with this little removal of the uh, lining. I'm, I'm not, um, I'm figuring that the lining is not going to be this little section of lining is not going to be salvageable. It's not that I don't wouldn't want to, but you know, if I could, but I found there you go. The lining is pretty fragile. So um, to save it is really uh, same thing on this side. I want to take it so that the spatula ends right there at the side and go further because then I could damage the outside look. You have to keep exchanging these to keep them warm and moist. And it wouldn't be a bad idea to... Because this will dry up pretty quick as I'm moving through this, but allow me to introduce a fair amount of moisture to that glue line. I tend to talk to myself as I work, so <laughs> if you hear me mumbling, it's uh, I'm concentrating, I'm not trying to ignore you. So I feel like I've got loose right along there, here. I don't know if I can get in here. As I mentioned, I'm not actually trying to save this little section of lining, so I'm not going to try and chisel this off. got the lining all removed there yet but I can see that the, the end of the brace 
does not go all the way to the edge of that, you know, uh, binding everything right there. So it was just tucked into that just a little bit. So I already see the end of the brace. So I can clean that lining up after the fact here. I'm not going to worry about that so much at the moment here. Just try to get the end of that brace up. We can truly start. If this brace is uh, ends up being similar to the others, at some point I'm gonna be able to start coming this direction, and uh, you know it should just start to peel right up here and get some actual uh, just come up faster. It should not be this slow of a process all along the edge of the brace. At least that's what I'm hoping for. Okay. Have to let the let it come off. How it comes off. I have to make sure that I'm not digging into the top whenever I'm removing this. So I'm trying to stick the spatula right into that glue line. If by chance I miss that glue line, got to lift it mess it into the brace rather than into the top because the brace is coming off and not going to be reused. The top of course, as we know, is going to be reused. Alright, so coming loose um, but is it the right thing and am I sometimes a nice little pop or crackle of uh, release there is a good thing that's uh, one of the questions I'm always thinking of is is that noise good or bad and if it's bad how bad is it if it's good, jump on it and go with it so that it actually aids in the removal. So, got the brace up to the bridge plate here. Now, it's going to be a bit of a challenge to come into the bridge plate from this edge, and that edge is still pretty well glued. You can see from this side where I've got the bridge plate. So, let me try to. And one thing that is helpful with the multiple knives is to get one in there and let it in there and have it act like a bit of a fulcrum while I again work on the glue line right beside it. Because every once in a while you get lucky and a thing like this bridge plate which I'm have to be prepared for the probability that it's going to come off fractions of an inch at a time here, but wouldn't it be nice if I could pop a large section of it off and have the glue release, because that reminds me, um, one of the things that I should be doing, I should be not letting my white knife fall all the way down in there, um, is to Use the heat lamp to facilitate this whole thing. So I'm adding some water here, and areas that uh, come off, get them to penetrate a little bit. Now I'm going to use the heat lamp to try and soften that whole thing. Of course, 
with the heat lamp. I don't have to worry about much the heat causing any damage here on the inside, but I can't heat it up so much that I, that heat penetrates all the way through and causes problems on the outside, which I'm trying to preserve. But that's another reason for the water. I put the water on there so that the heat lamp is warming up, you know, making warm, moist uh, situation to soften that glue. But if I heat it up, as I'm heating it up, if I see this water that I've introduced start to dry up, I know that that's probably a good time to stop because it is starting to penetrate into the wood and uh, start that uh, the heat penetrating all the way through to the other side and heating up the lacquer in particular, which I don't want to do, or I want to keep it to a minimum, of course. And part of that is just feeling it with my hand. If it just feels warm, if it gets to the point where I touch it like this and I say, hmm, you know, feeling a little warm, I, that's a good time to stop. So this part heats up and it's probably starting to penetrate. Right. Keep all that to a minimum. It's all about approaching that line there. Of, uh, nice and warm, but not causing any damage to parts that I don't want damaged. helped some because I'm able to work the back edge of this bridge plate. I feel like I'm in that glue line. I can see the glue squeeze out, just sort of softening up and feel the knife move through there without, it feels like it's not cutting, it just feels like it's moving through that glue line nicely. All right. That's another thing I've got to be careful of. It's uh, pretty easy to do so because I'm working down inside here. As I'm pushing that knife along, I have to keep some pressure on this. And if this were on the top, my hand were right here, for instance, and I was, you gotta be careful of that one. Mm. That little pop, I just I just moved through that brace and it quickly moved through the edge. And I said, ah, that was good, but that can be a little dangerous if you're not careful. If you're not thinking about if I pop through here, because I've been very successful to hit that glue line with enough heat and moisture, uh, make sure the edge end of that knife as it moves through, or the spatula moves through quicker than expected. Your hand's not the first thing it hits on the other side, because it has happened before. <laughs> oh yeah. That was actually a chisel that did that, but <laughs> there are, and yeah, that one was, just the size, I would say, this knife in particular. Yeah, so I learned that one the hard way. But that's usually the best way to learn something. You remember that one. Don't do that again. Because that left a mark. All right. So what do we got here? More of the same. This rather uh, fairly slow work, but uh, actually this is not as tedious as it could be. You know, I feel like I'm actually made quite a bit of uh, progress there, but that's what I'm going to continue to do. Work my way up this brace, get the rest of this plate off. Hopefully I'll have these two finger braces, this section of the X brace, and the whole plate off here in this next session. And uh, then proceed on. Um, let's take a, I think that's enough of brace removal, live action brace removal. Let's take a quick look at the progress we've made on this other project. I don't have anything, uh, yeah. I don't have anything live action planned for this one, but we've definitely made some progress. I think that I glued the pickguard on since the last time. I'm sure that I glued the bridge on since the last time. And uh, uh, got the new holes drilled through the new bridge plate. The neck has been removed. 
and I'm pretty far along on recutting the new neck angle. I've got these surfaces here cleaned up pretty well. Um, and a uh, fair amount of progress refitting the new neck angle here. Well, I've got this joint fit uh, fairly tight with no gaps, but, and I'm also close to having the right neck angle. I have to do just a little bit more. Right now, the straight edge comes very close to the top here, but it's just below. I want that straight edge to skate across the top when I'm done as far as the neck angle. So that it's sitting just a little proud of that bridge. So when I string it up, that straight edge hits the top. So I can anticipate a little bit of top movement there. But um, there you go, where I'm at with that. So uh, almost have the angle, the angle uh, where I want it. Have the fit pretty tight. I'll have to finalize that. Then I will make two shims fit down into the dovetail because as I've changed that angle, it has changed the fit here. And also just just the removal of the neck and cleaning up the glue and make sure that these two surfaces are as flat and, and straight as possible has changed that fit. So I definitely need those shims. That's where I'm on at on this one and. Uh, been kind of going back and forth on these uh, hour or two in one session on brace removal, another hour or two in session on that uh, per session. And that allows me, to, uh, that's usually about a, a, a enough time concentrating on one particular job there that it's nice to take a break and move on to something else. Keep juggling all this at the same time. So that's where we're at on the, the two D28 projects. Uh, thanks for tuning in. As always, send me a question or two. What are you thinking about? Um, and uh, keep tuning in to In the Shop, and we'll see you in a few weeks. Thanks, everybody.